What's up everybody? My name is Ryan Turford and today it's Monday so we got another Let's Play. I apologize for being late this week. Uh, we are playing Star Wars Battlefront. Why? Because it's Star Wars week this week. Um, not necessarily for Let's Plays but because The Force Awakens comes out on Thursday which I am very, very excited about. I've already got my ticket. I'm ready to go. Uh, of course I'm going to be dodging as much social media as I can this week because I don't want to get spoiled. Sorry guys but you know. That's that. Them's the breaks. I can't help it. I don't want to know anything about it going into it on uh, Thursday night. I'm very, very, very excited for it. Um, probably one of my most anticipated movies in a long time. Um, I mean, I, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, um, as many people might know from listening to uh, the Game Moose podcast. Which, by the way, if you, yes, you watching at home. Uh, are looking for a new video game podcast to listen to, uh, look no further than the Game Moose podcast, which I co-host every single week. All the deets are in the uh, description below. We're on iTunes and YouTube and all kinds of places. Um, again, we're going to jump into Star Wars Battlefront because, I mean, on the, as I said before on the podcast, um, I love Star Wars so much. Now, Battlefront's an interesting game because it has a lot of different modes, um, but not all of them are very fun to play. I mean, there are some really, really good ones, um, and I love the the minute to minute gameplay in Battlefront. Um, the problem is the the modes. While there are a lot of them, um, try some things that don't really jive that well. Um, and again, even the new mode that they added with the the Battle of Jakku um, improves on a lot of those modes, but it still um, sort of has some some of the same shortcomings, which is too bad. I still really love this game, though. To be fair, like even if not every mode is perfect, um, it doesn't matter to me. This game is still fucking awesome. It's one of the best Star Wars games I've played in years. Um, of course, I was a huge fan of the original Star Wars Battlefront on um, the original Xbox. I played the hell out of it, um, and I mean, I'm really excited to jump into some of this. So we're playing some Fighter Squadron. Um, Fighter Squadron is probably my favorite mode for Battlefront. Um, basically, I mean, any mode that allows you to fly around in A-Wings and X-Wings and TIE Fighters and TIE Interceptors, come on, man. Let's be real here. It's going to be awesome. So it looks like we jumped into a game that basically just started. Uh, we're going to play a couple matches um, because they usually go by fairly quick. Um, of course, my favorite uh, planes to fly are the A-Wing and the TIE Interceptor on Imperial and Re uh, Rebel side, respectively. Um, although the X-Wing and TIE Fighters are, are actually a lot better than I thought they would be in this game. Um, I'm more, I more I more prefer uh, faster flyer, fires, flyers. Jesus Christ, I can't talk today. Um, as opposed to slower ones like the X-Wing. Um, basically the main difference is the A-Wing can take a little bit less damage than the X-Wing, um, but is way faster and it's a lot better maneuverability. Um, but at the same time, uh, the X-Wing can take more hits, um, it deals out more damage, so it kills. It's better at killing enemy fighters or even dealing damage to something like the, the Transports or the Millennium Falcon or any of the hero units, really. Um, so that's sort of the main difference between the two. Again, some of the other modes in this game are a lot of fun as well. Um, I really like Walker Assault or uh, Supremacy. Um, those are my other two favorite modes, but I mean, Supremacy is basically just like playing Battlefield. So, basically in Fighter Squadron, what we're trying to do, um, you see the, the, the totals, the point totals at the top, whoever reaches 200 first wins, um, but also, um, you get a lot of points for, uh, you get one for shooting down every, f for each fighter you shoot down, and then there are transports, um, and the transports, uh, award extra points if you're able to sink them or defend them, depending on whose side you're on when the transports spawn. Um, and they'll, they'll usually spawn randomly um, as far as who's defending and who's attacking. Um, and it's generally easier to attack than defend, although um, defending is not too difficult. Like, it's usually a pretty close split. Um, now, the reason you see me locking onto targets before I shoot them um, that is basically the main conceit with flying, and a lot of the, uh, times newer players don't really realize that, that that's what you're supposed to do. Um, even with your blasters, um, you can just aim the, the the normal way, but it is pretty tricky with the, the control stream control scheme we've got going on here. Um, for the most part, it is just easier just to fly in like that, lock on with your blasters, and again, you're locked on for missiles too, so for the most part, um, it's pretty easy. Now... 
if I wanted to play as, say, the Millennium Falcon um, or the the Slave One, just like every other uh, battlefield uh, battlefront map in this game, um, there's a little hero icon, just like the one I just picked up for vehicle repair, um, that allows you to play as those fighters. Um, but again, they're very unless you know exactly where they are on every single map. Um, for the most part, you're not getting one uh, because. For the most part, people have just memorized their locations and just go for them right away. Because, come on, who doesn't want to play as those? So we're going to just do an evasive maneuver like that. Try not to get shot down. Of course, a lot of times when you've, they've got the lock on you, you're, you're pretty much toast. Man, we're getting our butts kicked. So, um, a transport has spawned for the Empire. We have 30 seconds to kill it. Um, it's at... It's dying pretty quickly, so it, uh, it seems like some of our allies are there. Um, again, if you're on the opposing team, it, this is actually a good way of getting a lot of kills on enemy fighters. Because generally, what everyone does is they bunch around the transport um, and just sort of shoot down um, anyone who's there anyways. Like, it, it's just so easy because they're just so busy focused on the transport that you, j you can just easily focus them down. Um, now, Slave 1's there. Unless we're in the Millennium Falcon, it's very tough to kill it. So we're generally going to try and avoid it. Especially because it really only has to shoot us a few times before it kills us. And sort of, with missiles, you just... As long as you stay locked on your target, they'll, they'll just hit it. Which is pretty awesome. Again, the, the re main reason why I believe that they uh, designed the, the fighter combat like this was because in the movies anyways, uh, what would happen when you would watch like the, the um, shots from the cockpits of the TIE Fighters or the X-Wings is they'd have to lock on first before they would even fire their blasters. Um, so for the most part, that's sort of uh, I, where I believe they got the idea for this. Again, this is not something you see too much in other flight sim games. Um, so for the most part, I think I think it's very it very much fits in the style of the universe, anyways, um, as far as the way that those systems work. And it looks like we were defeated, unfortunately. But I mean, come on, we were getting our asses kicked for a while there, so totally understandable. Um, again, you basically get k kills, but also there are AI ships. Um, so I shot down a lot of them. Um, basically, it just, um, you still get the same amount of points, uh, for every kill you get, regardless of whether or not they're an AI. Um, but for the most part, um, it's just cool, like, it's just so much more epic to have a million fighters on screen. So I actually really dig the, the fact that they're AI fighters. And, and it's sort of a callback to the original Battlefront games, because the original Battle, Battlefront games, um, like Battlefront 1 and 2, uh, there were AI soldiers all over the place. Like, even when you did uh, the space battles, there were a bunch of uh, fighters in, in space as well. But when you're playing this mode, I know a lot of people say that Battlefront 2 is better, and I personally agree with that because I think Battlefront 2 overall is a better package. Um, but as far as the ship-to-ship -ship combat, um, like in Fighter Squadron, I think it's far superior to that. I, it's, it feels like the, there was a lot of tuning and, and honing go that went into this mode. Um far more than, say, some of the other modes, maybe. Um, although that's not really a fair thing to say either. Um, so now we're going to play on the Empire side. Um, whereas the, the ship combat in the original Battlefront felt really weird. Like, um, it was it didn't feel like it was really um, as honed as, as this experience is. Like, um, sure, this isn't something as um, super precise or as fun as, say, maybe playing, like, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter was back in the day, um, or even something like Rogue Squadron. Um, but we never really got multiplayer Rogue Squadron, um, something that I really love. Like, we got co-op, but we never really got, like, 20 on 20 or 10 on 10 versus mode or something like that. Um, something that I feel like um, would have been awesome to see in later, later uh, Rogue Squadron games, provided that they ever made them, which, unfortunately, they did, did not... Um, Rook Squadron is actually one of my favorite uh, Star Wars series of games, um, and it's still really cool. Like, they still really hold up, despite the fact being old, older games. Maybe not the first one as much, um, being that it was an N64 game. It was also on PC, but for the most part, it was optimized for that console. Um, so it's sort of tougher to go back to that kind of game. 
Especially because it is a lot blockier than, than something like this. Um, but the flight mechanics in the, those games, especially like Rogue Squadron 2 on the GameCube, really still hold up and are still really awesome. Um, if you're ever actually able to get a hold of a copy of that game. So let's have got an enemy of our, our tail. That would be this guy right here. And we just shoot him down. Easy peasy. Now again, you can you can fire your uh, your your uh, beams if you don't have an enemy locked on. Of course, you're usually a lot easier, or you you usually know you're going to take them down anyways. A lot uh, easier if you actually have the lock on. Man, we're getting our asses kicked again. This is not looking well. All right, so there's a rebel transport. We can definitely go after it. Um, again, we don't want to go straight into it because, as I mentioned, it's sort of that's sort of the way that enemies usually pick you off. Um, but it looks like we destroyed it. I didn't even have to help. Again, I, I helped by killing one of the enemy fighters, so that works. Kyle fell four two two. What? I thought it was down. Okay, there we go. So now it's dead. It, ga it gave us the audio cue that it, we had shot it down, but in fact, it wasn't actually dead. And of course, you saw the, the big boost in points. It almost doesn't matter at this point because we're so far behind that this is just looking like a bloodbath. As you can tell, the, the A-Wing is way faster than the X-Wing. Um... It just sort of just blew, it, blew by us there. Now, the one main difference between uh, the Rebel ships and the Imperial ships is they have, like, um, you'll see on the bottom right-hand corner, they have, we have power-ups. Uh, we have a, a speed boost, whereas they have a shield boost. Um, so it's actually really helpful at deflecting incoming missiles, um, which is why generally your missile lock-ons are less important when you're playing as the Imperials as, say, when you're playing as the Rebels. Uh, because Imperials really can't do much about it except use uh, evasive maneuvers to get sort of get around them, um, whereas the Rebels can sort of use that ability in order to shake a lot of them. Of course there, if you don't have the reflexes, or if it's if the enemy's too close to you like that, then well, you're, you're still going to get shot. Alright, so now it looks like our transport has spawned. Uh, again, this is a good way to get kills if we fly down here and sort of shoot the enemies that are just following the ship. Because look, he's just sort of flying in a straight line. Again, we, we got him with the, the missile, but unfortunately they downed us. Uh, and they took out our shovel. So yeah, this match is basically over. They're up by 100 points. There, there's basically no coming back from this. We're gonna go after this guy here. I believe he's in AI. And he is. Come on. There we go. Oh, and he just did a loop-de-loop. -loop. Alright. So there we go. We have been defeated again. I'm doing my best, guys, but... Um, like, we're at least in the top three kills and points. Like, in fact, um, I had the more the most player kills on our team, but that still didn't matter. They they were too good. So we're going we're gonna to do one more. Uh, we're going to hopefully try and get revenge this time, even though we'll be playing as the Rebels, and the Rebels don't like revenge um, and we're gonna see if we can take them down this time I mean uh, it's not looking good folks I I'm doing the best I can here but uh, my my teammates are just sort of they're doing okay but they're just I, I I saw some of them just flying around in circles they're they're being very good targets this time now we have 49 items available um, a lot of the unlocking in this game I'm not a huge fan of because um, you really you get a ton of unlocks, but you don't really get a ton of credits. It's very, very difficult to 
uh, amass enough credits to buy a lot of things. So for the most part, you're, you need to sort of be picky and choosy anyways. Uh, for the, a lot of this information, though, is really useful in the ground game, um, which we're not really playing. So um, for the most part, it's not something you have to worry about. So we're going to jump into an X-Wing this time as opposed to an A-Wing. Um, again, the X-Wing is more powerful than the A-Wing is, um, but it is a bit slower. Um, but that's okay. Um, for the most part, we can just dole out the damage on these these guys uh, pretty easily, especially because they're TIE Fighters, which take a lot of damage. There we go. TIE Interceptor is... Oh, almost dead. He's pretty good at evading that guy. Of course, this is a, uh, this planet is Sullust. Um, it's a basically a, a planet that they only really talked about in the expanded universe. Um, it's not actually a planet that they talked about in any of the movies. Like they mentioned it, but we never actually got to go there or see what it looks like. Um, so it's kind of cool because I think I believe they use um, Sullust was supposed to be a planet in one of the movies, um, but they just never actually ended up using it. Um, so it's kind of cool to actually be able to experience that as one of the planets you can you can sort of fly over in this game or even go on the ground and um, it's pretty cool now one thing I will say about this game is it's fucking gorgeous um, I mean the one thing that that battlefronts always had for it at least this game is that it is an absolutely gorgeous game no no game in particular I think really captures what it looks like to be in Star Wars than say this game does. Um, the other the the other closest game I would say is probably uh, Rogue Squadron 2 on the GameCube because it was really trying to emulate the the fights from the original trilogy, which is what this does. Um, and those were more just the the battles basically ripped right out of the movies, like that the um, Death Star trench run as well as other things. Whereas you don't really get that in this game, which is kind of too bad. Like I kind of wish that um, there were modes where you could actually sort of do like the Death Star trench run or play around like the the battle of the, the second Death Star and other things. So it looks like we're doing a lot better this time. It, maybe they rebalanced our teams, maybe. Uh, here comes the transport, so we gotta go shoot down the Lambda shuttle. We've been pretty lucky because usually a lot of times um, when I play games, they we usually don't get to start with the uh, attacking the transport. Usually we're starting on defense. Which again, isn't as bad, but um, for the most part, it is a lot easier to attack than, I, than defend, I think. So again, we're just going to keep our lock like this. There we go. Nice he just sort of just flew in a straight line. Oh man, Slave 1. As I mentioned, you sort of want to avoid the hero craft unless you are one of the hero craft. Um, for the most part, yeah, you do very, very little damage to them. You can sort of get the jump on them, but even if you totally unload your, your blasters and your missiles on them, um, you still really don't do a ton of damage, um, which is too bad. Um, at least one of the things in the original Battlefront is it was a lot easier to take out opposing heroes if you were not a hero. Um, whereas a lot of that, um, especially in the air combat, it is a lot more difficult to do that. Ground combat, it is a little bit easier, but you're still, like, unless you basically crowd around one of the heroes, you are basically dead if they see you. Oh, there we go. He tries one of the evasive moves. There we go. Got him. Alright, so now what we're going to want to do is we'll head for the transport, because like I mentioned, um, the easiest thing to do is sort of wait for them to come to us, which is what they're going to do. Man, that was an AI. That was a pretty sick move it did. Because again, for the most part, what people tend to do when they're attacking the shuttle is they'll basically just fly in a straight line towards it, just blasting it, which again... Not a bad thing to do because you want to put as much fire on it as you can, um, but for the most part, you just want to sort of pick all these guys off as they come up here. 
There we go, and that should finish the round once it escapes. And there we go! We finally won one! <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> After all those losses. Anyways, so that's going to do it for the Star Wars Battlefront Let's Play. Uh, what do you think about this Let's Play? Do you want to maybe see me play some more Star Wars Battlefront? Let me know in the comments below. Um, as I mentioned, you can also uh, get a hold of me on Twitter. I'm at Ryan Turford. That's T-U-R-F-O-R-D. Uh, we do Let's Plays every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, as, and for right now, we are doing uh, Mega Man Let's Plays every single Wednesday until I beat Mega Man 6, because we're basically doing all six Mega Man games in a row. So look for Mega Man 3 this week. Um, of course, like, subscribe, share with your friends, please. Um, again, if you like the content, or I mean, if you uh, want to let me know uh, sort of improvements or game requests that you'd like to see me play, um, like I said, just let me know in the comments below. I'm always reading your comments, um, and I always like your comments as well. So, uh, anyways, that's going to do it for this Let's Play. Um, so, until Wednesday, my name is Ryan Turford, and I'm out. Thanks for watching.